it's, it's Mother's Day, and so uh, mom is a reflection of God. That's kind of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to see in Scripture uh, just how the Lord created women <laughs> and, and what, it, what it means to be a reflection of him uh, as a woman and what that does for the rest of the world. But also, it's, it's more engaging than just for the women. There's going to be all of the opportunity to lean in and see our Father God uh, and our Creator God uh, in another intimate level. So first, I want to tell you this story that I recently heard, though. There was a second grade teacher and um, she was doing her lesson and her lesson was all about magnets. So second grade class, you know, they spent a whole lesson learning about magnets, what they do, how they operate, what their, what their qualities and what their attributes are. You know, and she had all the shapes and colors and sizes, you know, there's strong magnets, there's weak magnets, there's the one that looks like horseshoes, there's all kinds of, of magnets. So she was teaching them about what they do, spent a whole lesson doing that. And then the next day, she did, they're second graders, you know, so it's like a mini tiny pop quiz uh, about just to see if they could remember what they had learned about yesterday. And so she gave one clue. This is the clue she gave. <clears throat> it's a six letter word. It starts with the letter M and it picks things up. About half the class responded with the word mother. <laughs> ah, that's funny. That's funny. But oh, so true. Just yesterday, uh, I was in my bedroom doing something, and uh, there was a towel. Not my towel. It was a child's towel on my bed. And you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to pick it up, and I wanted to put it away. And then I was like, no, that's not your towel. <laughs> But moms, we just, we want to, you know, we, we go around tidying up everybody else's stuff for no reason at all, other than maybe we're kind or maybe we're OCD and it just needs to be clean, you know? I don't know what the reason is, but it's true. Moms pick things up. You know, another thing that moms are really good at? Knowing where stuff is. Like all the moms, and you don't have to be a mom, just a woman in general. You know where things are, you know? And you know where to find them. You, something could have been set down in the most off the wall, random place. It should never be there. It should never live there. But you've seen it. And you can find it. It's like we have this ability to make a mental note. Someone's going to need that later, and I know where it is. I have seen it. Like when your kid decides that they're drinking chocolate milk and they need to go into their closet to get something, and so they set their cup down in the closet behind the door. You're never going to find that. It's going to smell later, and it's going to be horrible. But mom, mom has seen it. She can find it. She's going to make you clean it up, hopefully. Or, you know, your kid, he's changing and he's got his cell phone and he's texting, whatever. He sets it down. And then his phone now is under that pile of clothes and he can't find it anywhere. Somehow mom has seen it and mom can find it. She knows. Uh, moms are really great at finding stuff. So I want to talk today, though, those are funny, but about how moms are a reflection of our creator, God. And so one of the basic foundational truths, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning. One of the basic foundational truths that mark what Christians believe is that humanity, mankind, both male and female, have been created in the image of God. It says, in his likeness, they both are like him. So just to remind us about scripture, we're going to go old school, just, you know, back to kindergarten, basically. <laughs> For some of us, Genesis 1.26 says this, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So just back to that foundational truth. God said, let us make mankind in our image. So God has revealed himself. And if you read the rest of scripture, God has revealed himself as father, son, and Holy Spirit. But here's the kicker. He is not a male. He's not a male. He's revealed himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but he's not a male. Male and female come out of God together, a reflection of his image. And this is just common sense. If God was a male, he couldn't have created a female. I mean, men don't understand women. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way that if God was a male, he could have created us. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, but for some of us, maybe, 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 for some of us women, there is kind of a real sense maybe of being overlooked or misunderstood and maybe even feeling less than in the eyes of God, our creator sometimes. And so if that's you, I just want to take a minute and say, dear daughter, you are seen, you are loved, and you are understood. And God created you on purpose, with understanding, and with insight. He's, you're not, he, you're not, 
confusing to him. He understands you perfectly, all the intricacies, all the emotions, the depth, uh, the, the this and the that and the here and there. He gets it. He sees it. He knows who you are. He's, he's not male separate from you. He is God creator, and you came out of him. And so that's a beautiful picture of who you are. And female, if you actually look uh, into the etymology of the word, means opposite of male or not male. That's all it means, female, opposite of male, not male. But both together become a whole representation of God. So it's male and female together that are that perfect reflection of who our creator is. And so I want to talk about three facets of God that are reflected primarily in women, not exclusively because we both have traits from our creator. We're not singularly having all these traits alone, but primarily these are reflections of God that we see uh, in women and in mothers. So number one, <clears throat> if you're taking notes, you can write this down. Mothers, no. Mothers, no. You know, like, have you ever heard of a mother's intuition? Mothers, no. Next to the Lord, mothers are probably the closest thing we have to omniscience. They're all seeing and they're all knowing. <laughs> I told you last week that Jesus loved my mom. She, he loved my mom. In the middle of the night, when no one should know things, my mom knew things, you know, like she knew things. Her, her spirit was quickened and awakened by almighty God. And she just knew things. Moms, this is, this is just women in general. They know what they are thinking. They know what their kids are thinking. They know what their husbands are thinking. And they know what every other woman in the room is thinking. All at the same time. No one even has to say anything. And moms just know. Women know. They have this, they have this sense. You know, there's a sensing. Uh, and women, there's the thing. Women tend to care what people are thinking about. That's the bigger deal. Women tend to care what people are thinking about. And they know what other people are thinking about. They, ju they just know it. What, to, to prove this point, what is one of the number one questions a woman might ask her kids, her husband, or her friends? What are you thinking about? <laughs> hey, what are you thinking about? Uh, from Scripture, so I'm going to pull this out from Scripture and show you that this is a trait that exists in our Creator God, and it was expressed in Jesus. I want you to see it. Uh, there's a, a, several Scriptures I'm just going to read to you. Matthew 9, 4. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Matthew 12, 25. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. And then in Luke 6, 8, it says, but Jesus, knowing what they were thinking and said to the man with a shriveled hand, get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. So we, we believe this from scripture. Jesus is fully God and he was also fully man. And it wasn't the man that knew what they were thinking. It was the God part who knew what they were thinking in jest, of course, but nine out of 10 times, if a wife asks her husband, what are you thinking about? What's the answer? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. And I, I, I'm, in, I'm kidding. But in all seriousness, women care. Women care what's going on in the minds of people. They, they care what's going on in the, in the thought process. Why? Because the thoughts oftentimes determine what we do with our life or how we view ourselves. And so our thoughts matter. And it's not, it's not exclusively women or mothers who care about what people are thinking about. But largely, that is an expression of our creator. And we can see that. And so moms, they also have a way of getting kids to talk. <laughs> uh, Ellie and I, we take turns putting our kids to bed. So normally I do Evan first and Elliot does Emma and then we flip flop. So then I go, I finish up with Emma and Elliot finishes up with Evan. And last week or two weeks ago, Emma and Elliot were having the best time. Like they were laughing. They were, it was so loud. I'm like, could you be any more disruptive at bedtime? And the kids' rooms are across the hallway, but the doors are open while we're putting them to bed. And so me and Evan are just like, what's going on in there? You know, they're having a blast uh, being super silly. So then it's my turn and I go in there and I'm, you know, 
It's mom, like she's not exciting, you know? I'm here to put you to bed, like we're, no more questions, we are done for the night, lights out, stay in your bed forever, I'll see you in the morning, you know? So it's a completely different feel when mom walks in the room, okay? It's still loving and it's kind, it's just not fun. <laughs> uh, so I go in there and she's got this crazy loft bed that we got from some friends, which is real cool. But I like to crawl up in there and lay down and when the fan's going, you know, you gotta like, duck and cover to get in there. But I go in and I'm laying with her. And as soon as I get there, she opens up and she starts telling me, like she pulls over this thing and she starts telling me about it. And she's like, mom, can I ask you a question? Or can I tell you what I'm thinking about? And I'm like, yeah. So she just on her own, of her own accord begins to share some things that she's thinking about. And she was a little bit nervous because she thought maybe I'd get angry or like I'd tell her not to do that. And so she said, like, I was a little bit afraid to tell you this because, and I said, oh no, like, I'm so happy that you decided to share that with me. And yeah, I'm going to help you through that. And I'm probably going to coach you into making good decisions through that. But I love that you're thinking about it, you know. So it was a really sweet moment that we had. Uh, and then afterwards, that's Ellie and I, we go watch TV. It's our TV time after the kids go to bed. So we go sit on the couch. I go sit on the couch. And I asked Elliot, I said, hey, because they had such a great time. You know, my assumption is that Elliot also got privy, you know, this information. So I was like, hey, did uh, Emma show you what she was talking about and like tell you what she was thinking about? And he was like, no. <laughs> you know, he was like shocked and intrigued and like she didn't say anything about that. So we're talking about women and we're talking about moms, but what we're really talking about beyond that is seeing our creator. God is really the one who knows the thoughts of his kids. He's really the omniscient one. He's the one who's all-knowing, and he's the one who's all-seeing. He really is the one who knows where everything is at all the time. And he is the one who can be trusted with all the things that we're thinking about. He can be trusted to hear and to receive and to hold all of those things. So how does it encourage you to know that God knows your thoughts? Let me tell you, in the same way that a good mother knows your thoughts, and loves you anyway, that's how God loves you. And I wanted to just take a minute, because I was talking to a handful of people this morning, and I was like, okay, we got mommy issues. Um, you know, <laughs> like daddy issues are kind of normal, I guess, in our culture and society. We, as we assume that, I guess. It's in every TV show, every movie. Uh, and like, even in the, among believers, we know because it's Father God. So we know a lot of times we have to talk through getting over some of those issues with if we had maybe less than desirable father experiences. There's some barriers that exist between us uh, and drawing near to a father in heaven. But for some of us, there are there's a different set of issues in drawing near to our creator because we've got mom issues. You know, maybe our mom wasn't exactly what we wanted her to be, or she wasn't as loving as we hoped she would be. But I want to bring us some encouragement there. And I, and I know we can't fix that. We can't go back and make that right. God, God is able. Uh, and there's some of us who have lost our moms recently. And so there's, there's very real tenderness that happens. And these are real emotions. They're real things that we carry as people. But I want to just remind us of who our God is. You know, there's that, that saying that God put a God-shaped hole in every single one of us that, that yearns for him. He set eternity in our hearts. We cry out for something etern eternal. We're looking for it. And so I, I want to say this. If you felt like, man, I wish my mom was this way. I wish she was more comforting. I wish she was more present. I wish she was more affirming. I, I just wish it was better. Can I tell you that that's who your God is? And you have a longing for that because that's who he is. And so first and foremost, you know, as people who love the Lord, we should be a reflection of that. But if that was missing in your life, it's not missing forever. And I know that's emotional. I know that I know that's tender. But there's a real loving, compassionate God who wants to hear your thoughts and wants to affirm you. And so I want I want to give that to you today. Number two, if you're taking notes, is mothers care. Mother's Care. Oh, I love this one. Okay, this is crazy. Uh, I like adventure stories. If I'm going to watch a movie, like, we're going to adventure. We're going to shoot some people. We're going to take things down. You know, like, let's do it. There's a scripture in uh, the Bible. It's Hosea chapter 13, verse 8. It says this, like a bear robbed of her cubs, I will attack them and rip them open. Yes. Justice, you know, uh, there's something very real.
real and very deep that lives inside of women to seek justice for her kids. And it doesn't have to be kids. Women seek justice for their friends, for their family. Like whoever is in their circle and is close to them, if you say a bad word about anybody, you're going to burn. Okay? Like cut off. You're out. Like there's a very real sense of justice that lives in that. I have a funny story. I used to work um, at a place in town. They had two locations, one here and one in another city. I was in my early 20s. Um, and I got the job there as like a receptionist kind of person. And there was two openings. So my friend was also looking for a different job. And I was able to get her an interview. And she got the job. Uh, and so we were both working there, not at the same time, though. Once I was trained, I moved over to the other location. So I wasn't like on site with her. And then my friend got hired, so she's getting trained. I didn't mention days in today's society. It was probably like more of an abusive situation where the employers weren't necessarily like probably following all the rules maybe they should be about how to train and interact with people. I didn't mention that. I'm just like, get a job and work with me, right? Okay, so uh, she's there. She's going through training. For the most part, it's great. And she makes one minor miss. Like, I'm talking minor. We're talking stickers on a chart minor, okay? Stickers can be changed. But uh, and the normal person doing the training wasn't there it was the actual boss lady who was doing the training uh, that day. And so my friend, she thinks she does it right, but she submits it to boss lady to make sure that it's okay before it goes over. And it was wrong. There was one sticker that was off. And so she kind of gets berated, you know, like, you idiot, how could you be so dumb? It's one sticker. Like, these are the kind of words, right? And not only that, she gets so angry that she's across the room. She takes the chart and she throws it at her. <laughs> throws it at my friend. And so my friend was like, she got hit in the head, I think, with it. And so at that point, naturally, my friend was like, <laughs> We're down here. So she stood up and she, you know, very calmly just walked out. But she goes home. She tells me about it later. But she goes home and she's telling uh, her mom. My, my friend is also in her early 20s. And mom was like, oh, no. <laughs> so she's like, she's going to go down there. She's going to call her. She's going to have some words. And my friend is like, mom, I'm an adult. Like, let me handle this. You know, like, I can do it. I, I appreciate, I appreciate your anger. I see it. It's so good, but I'm an adult. Let me handle it. But there's something very real about mama bear. Like she's, don't you, don't you, doesn't matter how old you are, you know, like she's a grown woman, can handle it. But mama bear still wants to be there. She wants to protect. She wants to make it right. Let me give you some scriptures about the Lord. Deuteronomy 32, 11 says, like an eagle that stirs up its nest, and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them aloft. It's talking about who our God is. God is expressing himself this way. So the Lord God expresses himself with the caring, nurturing qualities that are often seen in women. There's something very tender about what the Lord put there. And there's also something very assuring and comforting that that's who the Lord is for each and every one of us. Matthew 23, 37 it says This is Jesus talking. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And he is teary-eyed when he's standing on the top of the mountain and he's saying this. He's saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. So Jesus talking, he compares himself to a mother hen. And he says, I have that kind of concern for you. I have that depth of compassion for you. I weep when I know what's, what's inside of you and I know what you're capable of. And I see you just not choosing that or rejecting me. That's, that's what Jesus says to us. And then, <clears throat> so just to kind of lighten the mood, but who did you run to when you got hurt? <laughs> Probably mom, you know, because I don't know, in our family, you might run to dad, though. Mom, if you get hurt, I'm like, stop screaming. <laughs> Except for I scream at you. They're screaming in my face. And so I'm like, I know you're hurt. You can stop yelling now. Like, you yell to let me know you're hurt. I know it. We're working on it. Just shh. You know, uh, dad is probably a little bit more compassionate in our house. <laughs> uh, but if there's any kind of blood, he might faint. So I don't know. Luck of the draw with our kids. Uh, but anyway, naturally, when you got hurt, you, you run to mom. You want mom to comfort you. You want mom to make it better. If your mom wasn't around, where's the other mom? Like, is there a neighbor mom? Uh, we've got great neighbors, and my kids have run to other neighbor moms <laughs> when they've been hurt because they're a little bit more compassionate than I am. I didn't get that gene, apparently. Ah, it's okay. 
Uh, Isaiah 60, 66.13 says this, As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. So God is the one speaking there. And this, there's two things I want us to see. Number one, God understands women. That comforting, nurturing, God understands women. The second thing I want us to see is that God knows and God cares. Number one lie the enemy can usually get us to believe is that God doesn't know what is going on in my life, and God doesn't care. If God does know, he doesn't care. That's the number one lie the enemy. God doesn't know what's going on in your life, and God doesn't care what's going on in your life. Listen, God does know, and God does care. In the same way that a good mother knows and a good mother cares, God does. And if you feel like, I didn't have that, it doesn't matter. God is who God is. He doesn't change. There's no shadow of doubt or shadow of change in who he is. And so God does know and God does care. Those motherly qualities of women are, are divine attributes of your creator, God. They are a reflection of who he is. He is loving and he is caring and he does love you and he does care about you. Number three, mother's help. <clears throat> mother's help. Uh, when you get into a pickle, this just happened recently. When you get into a pickle and you need some help, who do you call? Mom. You call mom most of the time. Um, when you are in a funk and you just need someone to talk to, who do you call? Mom. You're going to call mom. Or you're going to call, well, maybe not mom. Maybe, maybe, maybe a woman. And it could be, that's not true for all of us. Some of us, we don't have that or we talk to other people. But there is something very real about women. They like to help. They help and they like to help. Oftentimes, women have creative solutions and they know how to do difficult things with grace and with tact. They know how to walk you through trouble. They know how to walk you through trouble. First Thessalonians chapter two. This is actually written by uh, an unmarried male apostle. And I think it's really cool. Listen to this. He says to the church, he says, just as a nursing mother cares for her children. So we cared for you because we loved you so much. We were delighted to share with you, not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Remember that was an unmarried apostle male talking and I, the question is where did he get that language from just as a nursing mother cares for her children so we cared for you he got that language from god which i just i just want to take off another layer there if he paul used that sort of language and also cared about others in that way it means that he had firsthand experience experiencing the lord that way and so as, as, a, as a male, as someone who was following the Lord, there was an openness in his heart to receive the, the nurturing, caring, sort of feminine qualities of Father God, and then to also express them as, a, as an image bearer of the living God, both male and female equally represented in, in who Jesus is. And so he transforms us. He makes us new. And the places where we're, where we're kind of hard and we're rigid and we're, we're locked into certain ways of doing things, there's a tenderness that the Lord desires to bring in there. And he says, that's only one part of who I am. I'm, I'm also this part. And then in the, in the women ways where we're maybe too caring. And so we're so caring that we kind of enable and we don't set boundaries. The Lord says, yes, I'm absolutely that. But, but I also, I set some lines and I, and I hedge people in and, and I put boundaries of protection and I put conditions on things because I want my children to grow up into everything that I am. Both and are this beautiful picture and reflection of who God is. There's another one, Matthew 12, 20. It says a bruised talking about Jesus, a bruised reed. He will not break and a smoldering wick. He will not snuff out until he has brought justice through to victory. And so that portion of scripture, it's a prophecy regarding Jesus that was first penned in the book of Isaiah, but it was being fulfilled in the life of Jesus when he was here on earth. And he's, I just want to ask you, how would you take care of, of a bruised reed. It says a bruised reed, he will not break. So he's something that's already broken or bruised and it's in need of restoration. He's not going to break it. The only way to, to, to take care of that and to heal it is to nurture it. You have to nurture it. And so God is a nurturer. God knows, God cares, and God wants to help. God has a nurturing, caring side. And that we can see, and it's largely expressed 
through the women portion of, of mankind, through the women portion of humanity. God knows, God cares, and God helps. So on this Mother's Day, I just want to kind of make it a little bit personal. I know that the needs in the room vary widely, depending on what happened in our lives and, and where we are, what's even happening recently, what we wish would have happened. Um, just relationships are messy and sticky. And no, I'm, <laughs> my kids are in like second and third grade and they're gonna need counseling by the time they get older. You know what I mean? Like I know it. We should set aside a fund so they can get counseling on our dime. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like life happens and things happen. And so there's got to be a little bit of a sense of humor in it all because none of us is perfect and we all need things. But there's a compassion and a grace and a gentleness on our God. And he is so good to make the crooked places straight. He is so good to bring wisdom in the places that we need it, comfort in the places uh, where we need those things. And so to make this personal today, what I want to do is just I want to invite you just in your own seat, right where you are. You can go ahead and even close your eyes right now as I begin to talk. But right where you're at, in your own personal space, begin to interact with the Lord. Just begin to interact with Him. Maybe that's just taking a deep breath and going, man, I never thought about this before. And closing your eyes and just seeing what kind of comfort or peace or, or words the Lord may begin to speak over you. But you can ask Him in your own space, God, what are you saying to me? God, what are you saying to me? He knows and he cares and he helps. So with your eyes closed and you're just interacting in there, what is it that you need? What is it that you need from God, your creator today? Do you need those fatherly attributes or do you need those, those motherly attributes in the same way that you might go to your mom and ask for help? Or you would want your mom to care or you would need the listening, knowing ear of a mother figure. I just want to invite you to ask God in heaven for what you need or simply begin to open up your heart, maybe to share what it is that you have been carrying around and thinking about and know that he is there and know that he cares and he's listening and he wants, he wants to sit there. He wants to meet with you. He knows how to walk you through trouble. He is ready. He is willing and he is able. We're just going to go ahead and begin to pray. Father God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you that, that you are my father, but even more than that, you are the creator, God, God Almighty. And there is so much dimension to who you are. Lord, you are secure. You are trustworthy. You are tender. And I thank you for your word and your promise to us that you are the God of all comfort. Lord, and you comfort us in the places where we need comforting. I thank you, Father, for your word that says that you are close to the brokenhearted. And I thank you for your word that says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I thank you that you draw near to us in the places where we need you most, those, those most tender places that we're often unwilling to go to because it's so vulnerable. When we get to that place and we decide that we're going to go there anyway, you meet us and you bring healing. You don't crush us, but you begin to restore us and you begin to nurture us. And so I thank you for that. And I just want to pray over those who are in mourning for whatever reason. Lord, I do thank you and I just speak your comfort over those who are experiencing loss. Maybe it's recent loss or they're just realizing the depth of, of things maybe they didn't have and they wish they had. Lord, I thank you that you're already bringing healing there. You're bringing wisdom. Lord, and you're opening up doors uh, and, and spaces in their life that hadn't been opened before because you desire to do something there. I thank you for that. And I just want to begin to pray over, over some women. Uh, if there's women in the room who desire to have children, Lord, I just, I thank you, Father, for that desire. And I thank you for open doors. I thank you for healing in wombs, healing in relationships. I thank you for healing, um, God, and just their, their hearts and their minds and an openness to trust you and to trust your timing. God, and I ask that you, if that's a desire, Lord, your word says that, um, Lord, you meet our desires. Lord, I thank you for, for your word in Psalm 37, 4, that, that when we love you and serve you, Lord, you, you, you grant us the desires of our heart when they are placed by you. And so I thank you, Father, that that is something we can hang on to. 
I want to pray for those women who maybe desire to be married in order to bear children. God, I thank you again for your timing and your relationships. Lord, I thank you that you are working all things out in us first and foremost, and that you will open doors for that. I thank you that that you prepare other people along the way. And so it's I, I would pray against anything that says it's me, I'm the problem. And I would instead, Father, ask you to help us and them fix their eyes on the fact that you are preparing something great and wonderful for them. And they'd be able to walk into that. I want to pray for women who feel like they've been called to singleness. And I speak blessing and anointing and release of favor to stand in that place. That, that Father, I, I speak your word that they are not alone. I speak your word that they don't, they don't need someone else to fulfill them. They are, made, they are completely whole because of who you made them to be. And so I speak healing and release for women to boldly stand in that place, to love and to serve you with all that they have in that place of singleness and fulfill your purpose for their life. That there would be a solidarity and a conviction and a joy. Maybe if that's been missing or it's gone dormant in the name of Jesus, would you fan that back into flame and bring it back into life? And there would be community and friendship and joy that would surround them. And then I want to pray for a restored relationship between mothers and children. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak your healing. You are the God of all reconciliation and you reconcile us first unto you, and then you reconcile us unto each other. And so, Lord, as we work out our issues before you, I ask for open doors of communication and relationship and forgiveness and mercy and grace to flow between mothers and children who have got strained relationships. And even for those of us maybe who our moms have gone on and we didn't get to make it right, in the name of Jesus, God, I ask that you would meet us in those places. You would comfort our hearts. You would minister to us. You would remind us of your word that we could let that go and operate in forgiveness uh, and find a new sense of joy and purpose in our life. I thank you, God, for just who you are. And I know that's been a really long prayer. But if you're in the room and you you don't know the Lord and you'd say, I, I want to open up my heart to him. I want him in my life. I, I want to see him as both my mother and my father, that creator God who loves me. Just lift your hand up into the air and I'd love to pray with you and invite, amen, I see your hand, amen, I see your hand. God is so good. God is so good. Do you think just repeat this after me? Father God, I thank you for who you are. And I want all of you inside of all of me. I want to experience your fullness. I really want to know you. I want to be found by you. I want to be healed by you. I thank you for Jesus who made that possible. I confess my sin. I receive your forgiveness. And I stand now as a part of your family. Fill me with your spirit and lead me to live like your child. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>